The Ticats are just wrapping up day three of their off-season workouts. I'm here with the spec Steve Milton. And Steve, uh, this is year two of Kent Austin's off-season workout program. What's the difference between this year and last year? Well, I think one thing, Drew, is uh, um, less to learn for a lot of people because he's got got returners coming back. So this is a little bit more complicated camp, especially in day two and day three. There were more concepts. Put in a lot more concepts yesterday without having to do too much review from the day before. That's part of it. Secondly, you've got Ken Austin's, Tommy Condell's, and Orlando Steinauer's guys in here now. They're not trying to convert other people who used to be here. They've got, I mean, it's been a hell of a changeover, especially for a team that, that, that went to the Grey Cup. When you include last year, the cleansing that went on during the middle of the season and what's happened since the Grey Cup, there's a, an awful lot of new guys from this time last year and guys in defined roles a little more, taking into account the fact that defined also includes versatility. Uh, a lot of uh, talk about the quarterback, Zach Caleros, uh, his first opportunity as a tie cat. I think the rotation has largely been Caleros, then Lefevre and Mazzoli uh, at the number three spot. Uh, what have you seen from the quarterbacks, particularly uh, from Caleros? Well, I like what I've seen. Um, there was a stretch just behind us there about uh, half an hour ago where the number of completed passes was extremely high, even for this kind of drill in which the percentages are, are, are very high normally. Um, so there's that. The confidence is, is it kind of drips off the guy. Um, that, that's what I like. Great throwing motion. Uh, seems to have a good relationship with, with, the, with the other two. Uh, it's probably no accident that that's the pecking order. Um, McGee, who they really like his arm, the fourth guy, Stephen McGee, he's been, uh, he's been hurt a bit this week. He didn't play much in the first half of the practice yesterday. And as you were mentioning earlier, we're Mickey Tettleton's son, Mickey being the catcher that played 1,400 games in, the, uh, uh, in Major League Baseball, is the fifth. Uh, and the, um, and, quarterback. Yeah, Tyler T Tettleton, and, and he hasn't looked that good so far. But that could be he's the youngest. It could be that he was the last signed. It was, I mean, it really was just recently. So so uh, that pecking order, I think you're going to see stay for a little while, through the middle of camp anyways. Number three is where we're going to be watching closely, I think you and I, aren't we? I mean, I think one and two are pretty well set until further notice, and I think exactly in that order. Um, we've seen a few of these camps, and, and we've watched this team over the last uh, several years. What do you think of the level of talent and, and where this team is at at this point in the season? Well, I'll tell you, uh, you and I have marveled. Every year we say, boy, this team's faster than last year, and I thought last year's the fastest team I've seen around here in a long, long, long time. At first glance, especially through the middle part of the defense, the linebackers, um, this is a faster team. Um, I don't know how fast they're going to be up front uh, in, in the trenches uh, because we haven't seen any of that here this week. If any guys that come back from last year are faster. But that's the thing that jumps out at me right away is, is, is it's faster. And I think they're, doing, they're going to do some complicated things. This is a complicated offense, but we never saw it come to fruition because it really never got to the point where Austin could put in the number of things he needed to do till week 12, maybe week 13, when he had planned to do it, and he said right from the start, after six weeks, we get really, we're really going at it. And he couldn't do it last year because of all the injuries. Well, and I think also your earlier point about this is, I think, much more what Austin wants out of his offense. I think he's got the quarterback he wants. I think he's got some, the running back he wants. He thinks some of the receivers, you know, it all fits together. Same thing on defense. I mean, I think Orlando Steinauer is now, benefiting from the fact that this is year two and the players that they have are the players that they want and that are ideal for both the offensive and defensive systems. Speed, versatility, and motion. Even on defense motion, which you don't usually think of, right? You just think of that normally on offense. There's a lot of motion on defense on this team. And, and you add those three together, and on both sides of the ball, what you're presenting to the opposition is confusion. And I think that's what, what they're trying to do. This is a new wave type of thing going on here. I think Toronto has the same type of thing. You know, I've talked about this before. There's been a change in the CFL, uh, and, and a lot of it has to do with fluidity and with uh, interchangeability and versatility. And uh, they're, the, they're among the first to vocalize it that way, but it's been kind of sneaking into this league now for the last two or three years. Make sure you check out Thursday Spectator for a full report from, from the uh, Ticat Minicamp reporting from, where are we, Players Paradise in, in Stony Creek. Uh, for the Hamilton Spectator, I'm Drew Edwards.